good morning good afternoon good evening we're going to do a very short video on written ability test how to go about this how to plan this section all of that i'm going to start with a couple of examples on what kind of topic you might get topic could be like this single liner like this a machine can do the work of 100 men but 100 machines cannot do the work of one man or you could get a decision making scenario that you have to analyze and say whether you need to set up this factory or plan something so something like a case study or something that is broad based based on one thing first thing you've got to do which is very important is wrap your head around the topic make sure that you clearly understand what is being said you won't believe this but up to 10% of essays are written on some other topic students are just not bothered to understand what it is that the person wants them to write and so be very careful spend up spend half a minute one minute extra read the topic once twice 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 be very clear about what you want to do right? and what do you do and plan your essay take the first few minutes I would, i would argue keep this very high up to 40% of the time that is allotted for your essay can go into planning and structuring and right? so keep that in mind so, so jot down a bunch of points and if you have to take a decision at the end of it when you say look i'm going to take a stand i've got to say tendulkar is better than lara or lara is better than tendulkar then it helps to think about it form the whole thought process think about what all you're going to say and as take the decision as well before you start writing fine don't think about it you don't have to take the decision on minute 0 but when you're thinking about the process at some point of time you take a decision before you start writing don't make up your mind as you keep writing and that that, that just kindly kind of mangles the whole writing process so to think about pros and cons pluses and minuses take a decision and then go for that and so you've jotted down a bunch of points what do you do after this make sure you have some sense of priority what are the most important points what are the three most critical points that you're going to say jot them down then supporting points point number 11 12 13 dump them and they don't have room in your essay keep that in mind right plan this now what do you do i want to structure my essay right? this is a um, a plain vanilla structure very simple structure any essay any and every essay you can say will have an introduction a body and a conclusion what is the introduction it's practically just a rejigging of the question fine right? uh, here before us we have this topic what it exactly means is this this is how i'm going to go about it thanks so you're, you're you're organizing your thoughts restating the essay topic and then going along that is the simplest way of writing the introduction or you start with a quote or start with something that describes what you're going to talk about right body is the body that we know we'll dwell on that slightly in deeper in, in more detail later on conclusion is you can you can if you're taking a stand say why you're taking a stand and talk about the opponent points and say still you've chosen this If you're going to, if it's just a broad topic, then it's a summary of all of the things that you've said. And it's this seems like an oversimplified template, but it's frightfully useful. So think along this: an introduction and conclusion, they sit themselves down. Then you go to the body about 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 how you structure your essay. Right? This is your broad structure. Right? The, the the most important point, the body is the meat of it. The content is important. Prioritize aggressively. You should not miss out on the top three things about the topic. so if you if you written down 17 points and you spend so much time mentioning 5 6 11 13 and 14 then you have not pushed up 1 2 3 your the, the 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 this whole essay writing exercise should convey to them how much clarity you have how well you can think about things and how well you can prioritize and structure and so that is very vital so don't do that and don't fall into this trap of mentioning everything under the sun you won't have the time and that's counterproductive keep that in mind right wherever appropriate refer to authority you can say the un hrc said this the hrd ministry said this so if you're quoting a study quote the study but don't overdo this don't overreach and don't don't go to unreliable sources right so don't do, in a bit to sound like an intellectual don't shoot yourself in the foot right but content is crucial right convey with clarity this is very vital keep your sentences simple keep your sentences in the simple tense don't use a lot of jargon don't use long complicated words and so don't don't try to impress people with your vocabulary and with your ability to write long sentences both are wrong ideas to take into an essay writing thing and this sentence right here which is over long sentences that move out of topic and wander off into unnecessary phrases can perhaps sometimes be not that easy to clearly follow absurd there are a bunch of uh, excessive adjectives and adverbs sitting there an extra phrase thrown in this whole thing means write simple english and right? write simple english right? content and structure matter and what you are saying how clearly you are saying it in what sequence you are saying it that matters flair 
and style do not. This is an essay writing exercise for people who aspire to be an MBA. This is not an essay writing exercise for a literature class. They don't want to know how good your English is. And they want to know how clearly you can think. It's an exercise in articulation and clarity and not in flair. Remember that. Fine. In the end, two very important points. Make sure the grammar and spelling you stay on top of. You, you can get knocked off points left, right and center for some sentence that you mangle. Be very careful about that. And don't get some simple spelling wrong, typo wrong. Fine. Be very careful about that. Transition well. What do I mean when, you, when I say transition well? Whenever you're writing an essay, the meat of the essay, the body of it, you have three points, point one, two, and three, and some of the essay feels very clunky. You're saying something about India, and then you talk about Japan, and then you talk about healthcare. All three points are important to whatever you want to convey, but it doesn't seem like you're flowing well. The essay has, the essay just jumps out and is very jerky. Fine. How do you do that? Whenever you're elaborating a point, you say firstly, secondly, finally, and again, in addition to, equally important, also to be considered, moreover, all of these give you a very good framework for enumerating, elaborating on one theme. So these are good transition phrases if your essay is going to be arranged in that way. How do you show contrast? On the other hand, having said that, despite this, in spite of this, notwithstanding that. So those establish contrast. So sometimes when you say, these are the points that I'm speaking in favor of, then you might want to counter whatever is going to come against that. Then you say, not, I'm going to say, saying all this, having said that these points also need to be considered, taken into consideration. Notwithstanding these objectives, the merits of the original case hold good. So you can establish contrast and conclude very well. If you're saying pros, cons, and then concluding, then this framework is very well, very good, very useful. These, these phrases help you make the essay flow and not be jerky from one instance to another. Okay. Providing examples, this is simple. For instance, for example, an illustration of this, all of those are very simple things to showcase an example. To indicate time, after a while, post this immediately in the aftermath of all of these show are, are phrases where you talk about something which is chronologically arranged. Right? To show cause and effect, as a result, for this reason, because of these talk about A leading to B, A being the cause of B, that's useful. Right? I've just given you a set of sample phrases. These are very useful while ending a paragraph and beginning the next one. So you need to learn to paragraph well, otherwise it is just one block. It feels like you're leading a giant piece which actually conveys nothing. But if you paragraph well and, and, and make the flow better, then it seems like they're taking value from it. And so just click in transition phrases onto Google, you'll get a hundred phrases which are all useful in different contexts. If you notice the really well-written essays, the pieces of art, they don't use all this. And so the guys who are writing that, they have the transition from here to make the essay flow without having to have transition phrases. Fine. This is like textbook, learn this, 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 firstly, secondly, finally, use this and then see if you can go beyond this, where you don't need to use a, a force fit, something that has been deliberately introduced into your framework. See if you can move beyond this, but these are fabulous starting points to make sure that your essay is not clunky, not jerky, it doesn't jump from one idea to another. Just to summarize all together in brief, in conclusion, all of those are very good starting points for your conclusion. Stay on point, make sure you have your priorities right. Don't run off onto a tangent and talk about the another point that you want to talk about. Uh, review your essay aggressively to note, to, fig, to, to just look at it and say, you should look at your essay finally and say, look, am I writing something that is just not relevant to what is being said? Uh, and you should be able to do this mentally before you write down so that you don't, you stay on topic very religiously. That's very vital. Okay. Final point, very crucial, practice away to glory. We're giving you something like a toolkit to start writing essays. The moment you start writing essays, you'll realize that you've taken all this into account, but your essay is still jumpy. It goes from one idea to another. It never looked like it was this jump. When you read an article on The Economist or The Times, it doesn't look like the essay jumps or the article jumps. Whereas your essay is four disjoint points, they're just jumping from one to another. So starting well, finishing well, and having a certain flow, those are the toughest points to, to, to bring into an essay. So practice well. You should write at least five to six essays before you go for your real thing in order to make sure that you get the content structure clarity right, and also you get the flow right. Of, of these points, getting the flow is the toughest, so do practice extensively for that. 
All the best. Best wishes for your WAT.